Here I'm going to go through and do the integrated rate law derivations for zero order, first order, and second order reactions. So we're going to start with just a simple zero order equation, rate is equal to a k, uh, times something to the zero power of course is one, so that drops out of our equation. So rate is defined as the change in concentration compared to the change in time. That's equal to k. We're actually slapping the minus sign on that because our reactants are going to decrease in rate as time goes on. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the variables here and we're going to come up with dA is equal to negative k times dt. Okay. So we're going to integrate both of these. So we're going to integrate this from our initial concentration to our final concentration. We're going to rate this from zero to time. So when we do the integration of one, we end up with the variable. So the integration of dA ends up being A. We're going to evaluate that from A naught to A. Right? And then here we have a negative constant, so we're going to end up with negative K times the variable T. We're going to evaluate that from zero to T. So as we do that evaluation, A from A to A naught is going to be A minus oops, A naught. And then here we have negative KT. And so we're going to end up with zero for our, for our uh, initial point and then T for our final. So we're going to end up with negative KT. So the last thing we want to do here is we want to pull A naught over to this side so we can have A by itself, A naught minus KT. And so what this will do is for a zero order reaction, if we know the initial concentration and the rate constant and the time, we can then calculate what the final concentration would be. And it's a very powerful tool to be able to put this in terms where we are not working within uh, rates, but rather we're working in concentrations which are much easier to measure. Okay? Then, if we were to have rate is equal to negative K times A. First order reaction. Okay, we do the same process as before. We're going to end up with DA DT is equal to negative K times A. So we're going to pull this over to here, pull this over to here. So we get DA over A is equal to negative K DT. So we're going to integrate again from 0 to t. We're going to integrate from a naught, the initial concentration, to our final concentration. So here we're going to end up with the same thing as before. We're going to end up with negative kt. And then over here, we're looking at e to the minus 1. So for the integration of that, we're going to end up with natural log of a. And then we're going to evaluate that from a naught to a. So we're going to end up with natural log of a. Let me give myself a little room here minus natural log a naught equals minus kt. What we can then do is we can do a little you know, logarithmic stuff. We end up with natural log of a over a naught is equal to minus kt. And we can get a by itself by doing an exponential e to this, e to this. So we're going to end up with a over a naught equal to e to the minus kt, and that gives us the final equation of a is equal to a naught, our initial concentration, e to the minus kt. So whether your rate law is zero order or first order will greatly impact how your concentration varies with respect to time. Let's do one more for a second order. So for second order, we're looking at rate is equal to negative k times a squared. Okay. So again, we have dA dt is equal to negative k times a squared. And we're going to pull the a squared over here, the dt over here, and then we're going to integrate. So we're going to integrate from a naught to a, or dA over a squared, or a to the minus 2, is equal to negative k dt integrated from 0 to t. So a to the minus 2, the integration of that is going to be a to the minus 1 times our minus. So we have negative a to the minus 1 evaluated from a naught to a. That's
that's going to be equal to negative kt, or it's evaluated from 0 to t. So this is a little tricky because here we have 1 over a, but it's negative. So when we plug it in, we're going to get negative 1 over a minus a negative 1 over a naught equals minus kt. And so when we rearrange this formula, it's actually more convenient to make this the positive and move this over to its side. So we end up, we end up with 1 over a naught plus kt. And then the negative 1 over a can move over to here and be positive 1 over a. Now, that derivation there sets us up with three different equations. The next thing we need to do is we need to be able to go through and say, okay, well, what's the value in this? So the next thing we need to be able to do is to go through and say, okay, well, the half-lives and, and what we can do graphically in the lab to kind of confirm this. So with our three equations, there are kind of two key pieces of information. So graphically, now that we have this result, if we go back to what it was originally, it was originally natural log of a is equal to minus kt plus natural log of a naught. So if we graph natural log of concentration versus time, we would expect to see a line for first order with a slope of minus k. Additionally, we can plug into here, if we have one half of a naught, which is indicative that we've reached our half-life, we can go ahead and cancel the a naughts, take the natural log of 1 over 2, and then set that equal to minus kt, and we can solve for what the time is when this will drop to half, and that ends up being natural log of 2 over k. Now for this equation, we're already in y equals mx plus b form. So for our plot, we need to graph 1 over concentration as our y, and then time as our, as our x. And we'll end up with a positive slope of k if we're in a second order equation. Now if we go ahead and plug in 1 half a naught for the initial concentration here, we end up with 2 over a naught equal to 1 over a naught plus kt, and when we solve for time there, our half-life is going to be equal to 1 over k times a naught. So now our half-life is actually dependent upon our initial concentration, and then here we also have a y equals mx plus b, so if we plot concentration versus time, we will get a slope of minus k. And then if we plug in 1 half a naught, we will end up with a half lifetime of the initial concentration over 2k. And so some important notes are this. If you're in the lab and you, and you get concentration versus time, if you do concentration versus time, natural log of concentration versus time, and one over concentration of time, then whichever one of those results in the linear, a linear result is what order your reaction is. So you can actually find reaction order just by plotting these three things versus time. And then from the slope of that, you can find your rate constant, which you can then later use to find your activation energy if you do different temperatures. Additionally, we can see how, how, how long it takes for these to drop in half in concentration. So in zero order, the, the larger your concentration is, the longer your half-life is. Whereas in second order, the larger your concentration is, the shorter your half-life is. Because you're looking at a situation here where a large concentration means a really fast rate. Because concentration squared is how your rate gets affected by concentration. And so the results of those derivations we can see through these graphical interpretations as well as the half-life calculations.